Welcome to 28 Days, where we celebrate our history, our heritage, our culture, and our own authentic voice. And today on the set with us, we have Bria. Welcome to the set. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm from Delaware. Okay. Um, I'm a freshman studying political science and economics. Okay. I have two siblings. I never know what to say. I have two twin brothers okay. now, but I had a, an older brother who passed away mm. right before I, well, shortly before I was born. That was kind of a big thing for my parents. They were like really upset about that. And then a couple years later, they had me. So I feel like ever since then, it's kind of like they were kind of always trying to do the right things and staying on me, making sure I did the right things. And then shortly after me, I have, my brothers were born, so, so they're so twins. How far apart in age are you with your younger brothers? Two years. Two years. They they mess with you a lot. Yeah, they're always playing jokes on me. Do they, they do they trick you? Every, you, you yeah, you, you can tell the difference, right? <laughs> yeah, they always try to trick me. And like when they were younger, they used to really look alike. So okay. trying to pretend to be each other and everything <laughs> else. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what what's the uh, cultural context you grew up in? I mean, like, you know, where you went to school and all that kind of stuff? Um, all my life I've been in private school. Okay. Um, I went to Sanford School in Delaware for high school. So I grew up in the suburbs, general, like, family dynamic, I okay. guess, kind of like the standard family. Okay. So you went to private school, right? Yes. So what is people's perception of going to a private school? Um, they ca call you whitewashed or okay. say that you speak white. Speak white. Um, kind of question, even coming to Villanova, why you choose to go to a white school as opposed to maybe an HBCU or something like that. Now, now who are the people saying that? Is it people within your own community or is it a diverse group of people? Yeah, yeah, it can be black people, white people. It doesn't really matter. So white people say you talk white? Yeah. Wow. They like, will tell you that you're not black. Oh, you're not black? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> how, how, how did they come up with that equation? I mean, <laughs> they kind of say that if you speak properly, then you you talk white, or if you dress in certain apparel, then you're whitewashed, or if you're not speaking slang, or if you're always speaking a certain way, like they always just throw that at you. So if they wanted, if they were speaking in proper English, would they not be white? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. Playing. So 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 what does whitewash mean? Explain that to me, because I, I want to really get into that. Um, I've always taken it to be kind of taking on the stereotypical white persona, like trying to speak proper or n never speaking in slang or trying to enunciate your words, things like that. Honestly, I don't really understand that. Or like you'll get criticism from going for going to a private school or just being like brought up in a certain way compared to like others. They always say you're like whitewashed, especially if you're friends with a lot of white people or if you play, because I play like lacrosse. Lacrosse, it's a good sport. Yeah. Indians, you was the original sort of sports player, so you know that? <laughs> no, I no, did not yeah, know look that. At, yeah, Indians was playing it first, but go ahead, we won't. Let us, yeah. we digress, but go ahead. Yeah, they criticize you for that, saying that you're trying to be white, whatever they mean by that. Now, how does that make you f feel um, when people say, you know, trying to be white or anything? Like, like what do you, have you had these conversations with your parents? Um, with my mom a little bit because she works in guidance, so she loves to talk about these things. But I always felt that it's kind of an insult to black people in a yeah, sense yeah, because yeah. it kind of suggests that black people can't speak properly or that black people, it's kind of like a stereotype that black people have to speak grammatically incorrect or that they can't carry themselves a certain way. And I feel like for me, especially because I want to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. I always try to speak properly or carry myself in that way and it kind of says something one about black people and then about black people trying to be lawyers like as it, it's like some contradiction or something <laughs> so 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 what's your major you a student here at Villanova yeah I study political science and economics so so what made now I understand you say you want to be a lawyer so what made you want to get into law or be a lawyer um, did you have any inspiration um not anything like directly, but I've just seen lawyers um, growing up. My mom used to work in like courthouses and stuff, so she okay. would take me around there when wow. I'm younger. 
So I got into that. I've taken some classes in high school, like American government, that got me very interested in that. I did an internship at a courthouse, and I was like following around um, lawyers and judges and trying to get a feel wow. for it before I came to college, and I loved it. So I just want to continue with that. So you're gonna be. So you're not gonna run for office, are you? No. <laughs> you're not gonna run for office. So now, have you decided what kind of law you like to practice? Um, I'm not really sure. I've been looking at corporate, trying to get into that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with that or not. I've been speaking with a lawyer. I'm actually trying to bring a lawyer that's been kind of like a mentor for me onto yeah. campus um, in a couple weeks. So just trying to get a feel for it now. Now, now you wanna, so how, how different, or what was the migration going from Stanford, I mean Stanford, I'm sorry, in Delaware, and, and going to Villanova? Was it a harder transition, easy transition, or? Um, from a cultural standpoint, or was it a seamless process? Yes and no, because when I went to Stanford, I mean, it's a similar dynamic in mm -hmm. the sense that it's predominantly white, mm -hmm. but I feel like it was a lot different for me coming to Villanova because in high school I played three sports. I was wow. in student government and like kind of really involved in extracurriculars. So I wasn't just meeting pe white people or people in general, yeah. honestly, just like walking around campus. It was like I was meeting them through organizations where I was in leadership positions or at least heavily involved. So coming to Villanova and I'm not playing a sport and I'm trying to like break into these groups that kind of already have their own um, dynamic or at least their like system. Mm -hmm. And like I see here, it's kind of hard to be a black person trying to be in student government or something else like that. And I feel like Sanford was very different in that sense. So you played three sports. You told me one. Now, what's the other two? I played basketball and volleyball. Would you play point guard? A shooting guard. You was a gunner? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are some of the cultural activities that you're involved in here at, uh, on the Villanova campus? Um, I'm in two pre-law clubs, so pre-law society mm -hmm. and pre-law bolsa, which is actually a pre-law group that is still developing, but it's focusing on um, blacks and minorities trying to get into law. It's kind of like a different um, organization from the pre-law society. And I'm also in ACT, Association for Change and Transformation. Okay. And I'm in um, the Black Culture Society, BCS, and I'm on the board for that. So I um, do event coordinating, so that's something that I'm working on right now. And then I'm in um, Multicultural Business Association. You're busy, boy, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> so, look, so you said acts, right? So, can, so what do you like to see change and, and have transformation with? Um, one thing that I like to see is black people in more leadership positions in some organizations that don't see a lot of black people in them. So like pre-law society, for example, or other groups where there's a lot of white people, but not a lot of black people, especially in the leadership. So, so what do you think we have to do in order to kind of um, get educate people with that process or get people that kind of exposure like you did, your mom taking you to courts and all these different places would give you great exposure, would put you on a different track, more or less? What do you think needs to happen in order to get more people involved? I mean, I feel that it should start in the black community because I feel like the comments that we were talking about earlier about mm -hmm. speaking white, like that shouldn't be a thing. I feel mm -hmm. like black people should be uplifting black people for being educated or for wanting to speak properly. And I feel that once black people can accept that black people can speak properly or that black people can be educated, then white people can accept it. Because I feel like if we're putting down our own race for trying to educate themselves mm -hmm. or speak in a professional way that it's only like expected that the white people put us down as well. Wow, you know what? <laughs> this is some good stuff. I have about four more questions for. But guess what? We're out of time. Abriel, we'd like to thank you for coming to the set. And once again, we thank you for tuning in with 28 Days where we're celebrating our history, our heritage, and our culture, and our own authentic voice. And we're going to keep bringing great topics and subjects to you. Um, so tune in again tomorrow. We thank you and appreciate you.